is up everybody welcome to brandon's face it's the podcast about a playlist i'm jonathan beardsley and i am brandon may thank you for tuning in we hope you're all doing well we have a lot to talk about this week so we can just dive right in unless you have something newsworthy you want to chat about first uh yes i actually have one thing i'd like to say uh what is that taylor swift as uh mm-hmm. as uh, everybody knows i i do enjoy taylor swift um she has earned over a billion dollars around there from the era's tour. That's revenue. That's not, you know, profit. It's not in her pocket. Um, but she has turned around and taken $55 million of proceeds and bonused out her entire production crew. I heard people were getting bonuses of over a hundred thousand dollars. So I just wanted to shout out, uh, to Taylor Swift for, um, doing that. That's really awesome, man. That is fucking rad, dude. Good for her. Good for her team, man. That's, yeah, I don't you know, I don't really keep up with her too much. I, I, I can listen to her music when reviewing this podcast, but I've never <laughs> been a giant fan. But I mean, this 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 obviously is a, a very cool thing to do. Yeah, I think it's pretty neat. And I, I, I doubt I doubt I doubt these production crews have ever seen anything quite like that. So good for them. Happy for them. Good for Taylor. And, well, that's uh, the thing. That's the thing. And you, you can honestly speak to it more than I can anymore. But, like, you live in an area where there's a lot of very affluent people. That There's money everywhere. Yet a lot of the working class do not see any of that, even though they work in that industry. Yep. You know? So it, it's nice when I'm sure working on a show with 100,000 people or however many of these stadiums can hold watching and you're – you're doing your job and you're like, man, I feel like I should be getting a piece of this, you know, right. It's nice to get that piece. Right. Exactly. Um, I'm sure it felt good for I'm sure. It felt good. There there's, there's other news out there in the music industry, but I don't really feel like getting into it. I have a feeling I know what news you're talking about, <laughs> but we should probably wait until some more Correct. facts and statements Correct. are out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's dive right in, man. We got a new one from Calvin Harris and Sam Smith called desire. I don't know how he does it, but every every so often, Calvin Harris just makes incredible dance music. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, man, I, it's beautiful. I, this one's a little formulaic if you know the Calvin Harris style, but I think it works. What about you? Calvin is really in his trance zone right now, man. This is obviously not quite as trancey as Miracle, but it, it is close. Uh, Sam Smith as a feature on EDM tracks is really fucking good. Um, yeah. I, I will say this and a number of other tracks that I've heard this year um, and last year is this kind of like White Lotus intro adjacent synth. I just keep hearing it in like pop EDM. I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if, if you caught it or anybody else did, but I just figured I'd, I'd point that out. Interesting. No, I did not catch it. I'm going to have to listen back. I've heard the song a million times this week. Did not catch that, though. So I, I'll it, listen it's back. either the same instruments or like the same tonality. It just it immediately took me back to the intro. And I was like, damn, White Lotus was hot. People loved it. Yep, <laughs> it's a provocative intro. Gets the people going. <laughs> um, all right. We got a Zed remix of Where Are You by John Summit. The song has been massive this year, so I'm not surprised to see somebody like Zed doing a remix of it. What do you think of it? Uh, Look, man, why does he take the time to get to the drop and then just like end the track? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, this this one did not work for me. I, I thought it was going to be a slam dunk based on names alone, but it alas just did not work. Yeah, I do you think we'll ever get like a another Electro Z album? Do you think we'll ever get another Z album? <laughs> it's even <laughs> a question. It's been since 2015. He showed zero interest. Uh no, I, I don't. I think we're gonna get some more Electro Z songs over time and maybe in parts of songs more than entire songs themselves. Kind of the way the the panic will get occasionally theatrical for a verse, and you're like wait a minute and then it's like oh no back to bullshit radio pop right um yeah i think it's going to be something similar to that also zed loves to fucking add a ticking clock to things does he not oh like, for guy, sure he does the guy will throw a ticking clock in any song he touches <laughs> beware um uh, that's funny all right 
got a new one from side piece called what you need man this one is a ton of fun all of their music is just a party am i wrong no absolutely not man these uh these side piece tracks that we've been getting are pretty pretty great over the last few months uh i i don't think they've announced it but um we uh do you do you think we're gonna get an album god i hope so no they've been just rolling out singles i have seen no mention of an album but i i honestly don't like i would happily take that i think that their music stands on its own just fine but they're just like this is like a 3 30 p.m in the sahara tent type of group like for sure i'm not expecting album quality stuff out of or not quality is probably the wrong word i'm just not expecting album length stuff out of them i'm expecting a fun song every few months to keep the party going for their fans yeah well we'll see maybe we will uh surprisingly we got another new single from jungle i thought they'd kind of wrap it up after the channel trust one this one's called back on 74 and i i don't like it because it just sounds like a b-side to happy by pharrell and i, I feel <laughs> oh, like God, now i can't unhear it no dude you'll never unhear it and i feel like it's just been like an every other song thing i really like with this release so far right but i'm still very stoked on the album what do you think of this one uh, I, I I liked it, uh, but now that you say that, I might I might go back and revisit it. But I I liked it, man. They <laughs> they 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 do a really good job of using old school sounds with new school tech. Just it it, it seems to work like really well. They're playing Hard yeah. Summer this weekend, uh, and those the, those bastards put them at the same time as Boys Noise. Not my Hard Summer. Nope. <laughs> uh. uh. <laughs> Um, all right, we got a new one from Zoo called Changes. I'm I'm loving the piano on this one, but as with most of his songs, I am not loving the vocals and lyrics. What about you? Yeah, Zoo's on like this really odd kick lately, man. It's not really something that I love, but something I respect, I guess. You know, like his his voice sounds great on this one. I I, I just prefer his house stuff, and this is not it. I. I'm struggling to even agree with his voice sounds great. Like, I feel like when you first hear him and in the context of his greater songs, like anything off the night day, obviously, or Genesis, it's like it works. But once you've heard it so much, like the the magic trick is, you know it, you know it, you know exactly what's going to happen. And once you're not impressed by how well he sings for a producer like his that does his style, then you start to focus on the lyrics and that is where you start to dislike Sue. <laughs> yep. Cause the guy is doing some weekend level fuck boy, Brent Fiaz, <laughs> division. Like I listen to tons of it and I like the vibe of Zoo's music, but like what keeps me what keeps me under engaged after years of mostly shit like this is that he is still an incredible producer that can only do the style that he does. Like nobody else can do what he does production wise right now. He has his own sound and I'll keep following him just for that. Nice. Uh, speaking of somebody with their own sound, got a new one from anima and rebuke called siren. This one's fucking incredible. You digging it? Melodic tech house with some wild visuals makes for a definite anima track. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously I like this song. I like the majority of the stuff that he does kind of fitting into that, uh, Prita category where, you know what it's going to sound like. It's going to be slightly different than the last one, but it's going to be fucking great. Um, I, I, I saw a bunch of people on the internet complaining about phones oh at God. afterlife shows yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> and after watching some videos, man, it most definitely is a fucking problem. People are going to these afterlife events and just watching through their phones. That it, it sucks to put all your all your time and energy into visual shit like this and cue it up with a with a with an it, audio display and then have people not pay attention to it. You know, are the drugs not good anymore? Like, <laughs> I don't remember ever grabbing my phone at like a, a rave or anything like this like it wasn't something that i thought about it was all just vibes energy going like experiencing this stuff but to play devil's advocate this is like going to those kind of walk through art museums that are meant for photos if your set's going to be all visual and you're going to have some non-druggy people there then they're going to be experiencing it the way they experience normal concerts which is with their phone out i guess that's valid. like 
the person that is there to experience it with their eyes and get lost in it is just in the minority now, which is sad. Um, but incredible fucking news, which I was hoping we would get and has now been confirmed. Anima's debut album, Genesis, drops August 11th. Man, that... Oh, wow, that's soon. That's next week. Yeah, so on that week's schedule, we have this album, Genesis, Benny the Butcher, Everybody Can't Go, Emotional Oranges, Hail the Sun, Jungle, No Name, and Reason. It's going to be a stacked fucking release Dear week God, next week. Man. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Yeah, um, same. I feel like we've heard most of this album as singles throughout the year, but I'm still stoked on it. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop listening until I get the album so it doesn't do the KX5 uh, thing to me. I hit you up the other day, man. Revisit that one. I will. Revisit I will. it. Fucking, it's really good. I um, mean, I remember it being good. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it when I eventually can revisit it. Oh, it'll be on the end of the year show for sure. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's talk about a new one from Kill the Noise and Haleen called Give Out. What do you think of this one? Let's fucking go, Kill the Noise. Back to back to back bangers with these singles, man. Yeah. Does not miss, dude. This is great. Um, I hope the album's coming soon. We are very clearly heading towards an album. All the artworks yep. have been synergistic and together. The songs all sound of one piece of art. I'm just fucking excited to finally get some confirmation on this project. Right. Me too. Uh, speaking of Prida, man, we got a new one from Prida called Of Me. I will happily take some new Prida any day. What about you? <laughs> uh, it's a good track, man. Uh, I saw some publications say that he was pushing boundaries with fresh sounds. And while this most definitely doesn't do that, it's still a very good track. Uh, the <laughs> visuals for this one are pretty fucking neat live, man. Are you sure that publication wasn't fucking published in 1997? <laughs> oh, no, I checked. It was it was it was like July 28th or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right well we got a new one from paul van dyke and siri and macaulay called someone like you it's it's pvd bringing those old school trans vibes man i love it what about you cynthia and chill on this one man i really like it same uh got a new one from sasha and because of art called fused what do you think of it okay so it's so funny man every time we have sasha on the playlist and i'm walking around or i'm doing something and i got my earbuds in and I, I hear a, I hear a song and I'm like, who the fuck is this? And I go and look at it. It's it's nine times out of ten, Sasha. Yeah, and of course. <laughs> it's God, man, that 303 that slowly comes in towards the end is so subtle and so great, man. Yeah, dude, this one starts a little slow, but it blossoms into something weirdly beautiful. It's oh, for pretty sure. awesome. For sure. All right, man. Talk to me about this track from I Hate Models and Vitalik called Sexy Beast. Heavy and weird. Just exactly how I like I Hate Models. Yes, man. Heavy bass with like a gothic industrial flair to it just works every time. It has since the 80s and 90s, or at least I know the 90s. Um, yeah, man. I'm digging this one. Yep, it works. Got a new one from Adam Bayer called Robotic Arms. Uh, it, it's a banger, but it just makes me think of the goddamn grandma's boy scene for some reason <laughs> oh is that why you texted me yes <laughs> okay i thought you were talking about fucking apex twin because that's, oh, that's the oh, song yeah. that's I, I was using yes yes i was using it in reply to the apex twin I oh forgot. my god yeah man I, adam bayer makes good techno man uh that hap th this track happens to be a little bit more melodic than we're used to with him but i really like it i actually kind of hope we get more melodies from him techno purists will hate this song but i fucking dig it it's awesome yeah man i'm digging it fuck the purists Hell um <laughs> got a new one from zay france called give it up have we talked about him yet i don't think that we have uh i've been listening to him for about a year or so he's he just signed to def jam like within the last single or two he's released it's kind of in that same class with like tone stith josh levi just good next gen r&b this is his newest single what'd you think of it this is uh this is good man his voice sounds great the beat is like somewhere between the 90s and today which i think yep. is pretty fucking neat yeah man he's got some really good melodies got a great voice like you said looking forward to seeing what he does with like a an actual label budget yeah yeah same should be good all right man this next one's a fucking 
banger we got one from offset and cardi b <laughs> called jealousy this is my song of the week man i i could not yes. stop listening yes. to it dude it's it's incredible so much so <laughs> that i am throwing quavo's new album rocket power on next week's playlist all so right be like ready it. for that what do you think of this one man look man i love it when w- husband and wives support each other like this one uh, this track is actually fucking great. I usually don't like Cardi B's music, but her, for, her verse is fucking awesome. And honestly, Offset needed a W after after everything that's happened over the last year. So this is this was great, man. Yeah, man, just really really fun back and forth. Um, all right, we got a new one from Denzel Curry featuring Juicy J. The long awaited "Blood on My Nikes" has arrived, and it is hard as fuck, man. Juicy J is wild for that Leonardo DiCaprio right? line in his verse, but man, this is uh, this is great, and I think he nailed it with the the guest selection. Juicy J fits it perfectly. What do you think of it? So I've been I've been listening to Melt My Eyes for the last what like year and a half now. Uh, this this shit took me right back to Zoo, man. I was like, yes, I was like Denzel, let's go. Yeah, Juicy's verse is great. Denzel does great. The production is great. This is a banger, man. This is my runner up for our song of the week i was talking to somebody about zoo the other week we were talking about our denzel rankings and i said melt my eyes was my favorite and of course you get the the look and it's like yes i'm aware zoo is a masterpiece <laughs> like <laughs> dude that album <laughs> don't trust no one but your brothers that song oh god damn it. i gotta throw that on you have that vinyl i do way. you bought it for me <laughs> yes happy birthday thanks bro. um all right, we got a new one from Mick Jenkins called Guapanese. This is just him doing his surgical flow over some twinkling keys that would have made Nuja Best blush, dude. This is perfect. I love it. What about you? Yeah, this album's about to be real fucking tight, bro. Love yeah. the piano <laughs> loop. I don't normally like it when the vocals are like so off-center to the production, but somehow Mick just makes this work for him. This is my song of the week, man. I, I yes. kept coming back to it. I was like, my, my man Nick, or Mick. Yeah. Yeah, dude. He's been, these last two singles have just been fucking fire, dude. This is this is insanely good. Yep. Glad you loved it, man. Yep, I sure do. All right, we got a new one from TK Maidza called Ring-a-Ling. I, uh, I'm not loving the hook on this one, but her voice <laughs> and the beat keep me into it. What about you? <laughs> Imagine for a moment a modern pop rap song without the word op. Um, no. I don't understand why she needed it in this track, but other than that minor annoyance to me, the track is pretty catchy. Yeah. Oh, it, it's definitely a vibe. Her new album drops November 3rd, and it's called Sweet Justice. We will most definitely be reviewing that one. Yep. All right, man. The event of the summer <laughs> has arrived. Moppenheimer by Gucci Mane has been released to the world. You really and thought that Gucci was going to drop a track called Wappenheimer and we weren't going to listen to it? Oh, oh, I knew we were. <laughs> it, it's funny because I don't... I text you the picture, right? When uh, somebody you... sent him this on Twitter? No, yeah, I don't think somebody you Somebody sent him... So somebody was like, the day Barbie and Oppenheimer came out, somebody tweeted this photoshopped picture they're like man i wish it was 2008 because you know we'd be getting this gucci tape right now (laughs) and he replied to it with some like cryptic emojis and lo and behold the track is now a reality that's amazing (laughs) he's giving the people what they want man i was not expecting it to be as good as it was i should i shall not doubt gucci main again you know gucci went on went on some mixtape runs back in 2008 2009 Lemonade is an all-time classic. By oh, the way. yeah. But uh, like most Gucci tracks, this is uh, very much not good. It's not bad, but it's also not good, you know? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> For what it is, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, I loved it, but... All right, let's 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 see where you land on that spectrum for this next one, which is Tech 9 Conway the Machine, X-Rated, and Joyner Lucas. It's called Knock. <laughs> Did it work for you? Tech 9 dropped his album uh, this week, but I, I, I kind of just wanted to hear this Kanye, this Conway feature. Um, everyone's verses are, like, fine, but, like, this is, like, no. the reason. This is the reason why he's never achieved actual commercial success. Tech 9? Yeah. I think it's because... 
the, he's got these like feature packed tr- tracks and everybody mm-hmm. just does like okay and like there's just too much going on i don't know man i, I even on like the tracks where he doesn't have a feature there's just, like too much going on and I don't know, man. It didn't quite work for me the way I wanted it to. I think Conway's verse is pretty good. I think Joyner's corny as hell. But <laughs> I don't know if it ever hit commercial success, but Caribou Lou is an all-time classic. Like, that is the song I will forever associate with him. And I think he's released some good music since. I think that the he's Worldwide Choppers rapper. era was decent. But, yes, he's a very talented rapper. I don't know if good is the word. That's <laughs> subjective. He True. is... He is talented. He can do a lot of things that not even his peers can do verbally, speed wise. But this song, it's not a good beat and none of them have good flows on it. So judging it based on what the song is and not how talented they are, this is a miss. Fair. Um, All right, man. Talk to me about this next one. This is a song called Beach by Double Suede. So I saw this band post on Reddit about their new single here, and I liked what I heard. I I really like these new rock bands pulling from like different eras of rock music and kind of making it work. I wouldn't call this a masterpiece, but I thought it was pretty neat. What did you think about it? Yeah, man, I thought it was pretty good, too. Super laid back, a little bit 90s. It's a it's a decent tune. You know, it's a little bit 90s, pulls a little bit from like 70s folk, you know, like it's 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 a little bit of a few different eras. And uh, hopefully they keep doing that and find find kind of like a signature sound, you know. Definitely. Well, we will continue to check them out. Yep. Got a new one from Boys Like Girls called The Outside. I am usually indifferent to their m- more recent music, but I really do not like this one. <laughs> Man, I, I, I did not. I, I gave it a few spins and was like, nope. Did you enjoy this one? No. Uh, reminiscing about 2004 while playing the music of 2004 is most definitely <laughs> cheating. Uh, they haven't announced it yet, but... I'm under the impression that we're going to get an album out uh, from them. They have three singles out so far, and I would I would be surprised if they're not going to try to uh, yeah. cash in on that on that on that emo money. You know what I'm saying? Of course, yeah, make that money. Uh, got a killer two pack of songs from the Kills here, New York and L.A. Hex. I'm loving the like dark indie energy on these ones. Really good stuff. What do you think of them? You know, it's funny. About a month ago, my wife and I were talking about how The Kills hasn't released anything since Ash and Ice, uh, their album in 2016. Uh, we saw them in 2017, and it's just been like nothing but remixes and remasters since. And lo and behold, they showed up on uh, showed up on my release radar, and I was like, bet. This is uh, the both of these are fucking great, man. I love their 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 brand of blues rock. In fact, we just heard okay. a song from one of their earlier albums on a TV show we were watching, and I was like, "Hey, the Kills just released new music too." Yeah, that's fucking awesome. I have never seen them live, but I bet they're great. Uh, they're really good, man. Uh, we saw them at Cal Jam 2017. Uh, she has this uh, the the lead singer. I, I I don't know her name off the top of my head, but Allison Mossart. That's it. Yep. Uh, she has this fucking grunge vibe to her, man. That is just so authentic. And she featured on a song on Concrete and Gold, Foo Fighters album of the same year. Um, and Dave Grohl obviously had her out to perform that song live that uh, at that festival. It, it was it was a really cool moment, man. They're uh, they're very good live. I would highly recommend it. Anybody go see them. Nobody's had the chance to since then, I think. But uh, I really I, I really enjoyed this. Maybe that'll change. Hopefully. Um, I haven't seen anything yet on Instagram. Um, dear God, the uh, the streak of Fiddler's covers <laughs> continues. <laughs> this is one of Free Fallen. Uh, I know you don't like covers, John, but this one's really fucking good. <laughs> no, it is not, Brandon. Yes, it is. No, it is not. I I'll don't know. You. Oh, how you enjoy this. How do you not, man? They it, they did all of the things somebody covering a song do, needs to do in order to make it their own while staying cohesive with the original version of the song. They put Fiddler Spin on a Tom Petty track, man. I think that for a cover, it's great. That, that, that That's my opinion. You're allowed to have Should yours. They? Yes. Should they? No. 
<laughs> oh man all right let's move on we got a new one from tucana called rabbit holes not my usual like preference of vocal style but it's a really solid track i enjoyed it what about you so man hardcore adjacent music like this is really an itch that i didn't that I didn't know needed scratching until I heard Drug Church for the first time last year. This band yeah. scratches that same itch. I really liked it. I hit the follow button on these guys. I'm excited to see what else they do. Uh, the, I, I really liked this track. This, this was I, I did keep going back to this one this week as well. This is Brandon Core at its best. Oh, for uh. sure. <laughs> All right, man. The Palumbo feature run continues <laughs> with another one. This is with Koyo. Song's called Message Like a Bomb. It's a, another absolute banger. I really enjoyed this one. What about you? Yeah, man. I don't know how we've missed this band. Have we talked about Koyo? I don't think we I have. I don't think so. Um, I think Maybe. they're releasing an album soon. This is the third of uh, three singles that they've released so far for it. Um, I say we cover it because this is right up Definitely. both of our alleys. And yeah, you're right. The Palumbo, the Palumbo feature run is, is still ongoing <laughs> who knew he'd be on a track with little uzi vert and now one on one with koyo <laughs> straight up year. man straight up good for him life he's is doing, weird he's doing his thing damn right uh got a new one from polaris called nightmare thought this one was pretty standard metalcore but it was done pretty well what did you think about it you know i think I think Polaris has always kind of made garden variety metalcore, but I really actually liked uh, the line, our best intentions pave our path to hell, which is obviously a, a different take on the song or on the saying, you know, our, the, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Uh, I think good it's a line. good line. I think it's a good song. Uh, this is their first release since the passing of their guitarist, Ryan. Uh, they have announced plans to still release the last album they wrote with him on September 1st. I'll be giving oh, it a yeah. spin. I don't know if we're going to listen. I don't know if we're going to re review it. Uh, it really depends on how busy that week is, but um, I, I kind of just wanted to share it. I really did like this song. Well, rest in power to Ryan. We look forward to hearing that straight up. Um, all right, man. Got a new one from Of Mice and Men called War Paint. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's it's a little formulaic and definitely a far cry from their prime as a band, but it's it's fine. What do you think about it? Yeah, I, I feel the same. I, I got really excited when I saw a Rorschach and a and a new Mice and Men single. Uh I mean it's it I yeah. I hate to say it, man, but metalcore is in this kind of like plateau where uh, you could have told me this was Currents and I would have been like, yeah. Also, is anybody in the band that made Second and Sebring or any of the songs that most people would associate with the Mice and Men anymore? I honestly could not answer that question. Like, I don't think Austin Carlisle is the screamer anymore. And I think he had some very damaging accusations come out about him last year mm. and i don't think shaley is the clean vocalist anymore i think he's the vocalist of a band called day shell now so yeah i'm pretty sure that the clean vocalist now is the old clean vocalist of jamie's elsewhere and it's pretty much a different band just using the same band's names like this is the and i know this because of the display pictures on bands that i follow <laughs> where i'm like yeah, that doesn't look like Emma Rosa to me. That looks like two <laughs> random dudes I don't know at all. Like, I, I, I don't know. It, you can tell just, like, the lineup changes with keeping names as brands intact is, like, a thing right now. Because, like you said, there's money in emo. So just being able to still use these names that have made some money is is a leg up, I guess. Yeah, I could see that. I but there might that. be there might be some people in this lineup that were in the band back then. I, I honestly don't know, but that's yeah, kind of the problem. You. Right. It doesn't sound like it and it doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah. And I, again, it, it's, it's garden, it's garden variety, man. So I saw of mice and men once and they did, uh, they opened with a breakdown of harden the paint by Waka Flocka. It was Hell yeah. Good times. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, man, let's move on to the last single of the week. It's by extensive slaughter and it's called life is a cold hell. Is this that new Christian band you were telling me about? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is ugly. It's really raw. This yes. is extensive slaughter's first official release and it's going to be, uh, it's on neon taste records. They do have an album or an EP coming out. Don't worry. I don't think it'll be very long. I have a feeling it'll be 25 minutes and you know, 10 songs. So we'll see. Is the whole thing going to be mixed in Microsoft? 
Angel. One can only hope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you nailed like, it, man. It's very raw, but that's kind of the appeal of the music of music like this, you know? For sure. Um, We will have to keep an eye on that one, one when it drops. We got a couple EPs this week to talk about. First up is Fernando Garrido. This is called Catarysis Volume 1. What would you think about it? Aphex couldn't be the only techno this week. Uh, EP, rather. Uh, this is Droning. It's the antithesis of Melodic, but it hits a very specific spot for me. One sp- uh, spot that I didn't really have much room for this week, um, but I'm sure I will in future weeks. So what did you think about it? It's it was a weird week, too. It is. I My notes <laughs> just say thank you for our obligatory minimal techno release of the week. Yeah, no, it, it was good. But between the two EPs we're going to be talking about, I did not circle back to this one nearly as much as the other one. And that is Fair. because the next one is a new EP from Aphex Twin, which is kind of an event in electronic music every time he releases something. And I believe he released a fuckload of music onto his soundcloud at the same time as this he did um, and i think that's all unreleased music which is yes. awesome and i think Different it's versions, old stuff demos yeah. random shit yeah uh but yeah man this new apex twin ep black box life recorder in a room seven f77 <laughs> god damn i think i saw like a uh somebody started a twitter thread they were like make up apex twin song <laughs> <laughs> it was just all this type of shit. <laughs> and it was great. But uh, back to the content of the EP, man. This is exactly what I was hoping for based on the single. It's phenomenal. Kept coming back to Inner Room. That song is insane, man. Love it. What about you? Uh, look, man, one thing I absolutely love about Aphex Twin is how risky every single one of his releases are. From Selected Ambient to Window Liquor to this one, it's always something so wildly different. Yet, you can tell almost immediately that the date that it's Aphex Twin coming out of your speakers. The break yeah. beats, the synths, the buzz saw, the ambient moments, the unconventional bass lines, the way everything simultaneously comes together and breaks apart. He is just a master at what he does, and I don't see anybody denying his dominance on this side of electronic music. This is like pretty much everything he's ever released. Fantastic. Yeah, man. Like, you nailed it. Everything he's ever released has been of a certain quality, and this is no different. It's crazy, man. I I have yet to see him live, but hopefully one day I will. If only that damn vinyl wasn't so much money. Yeah, I didn't Uh. want to buy that. Hopefully (laughs) hopefully scalpers bought it all, and they want to offload it as soon as they realize nobody's buying it for 60 fucking dollars. So, Hopefully. We'll see. (laughs) All right, you ready to talk about some albums? I am, sir. All right, new Post Malone album, Austin. Did you like it? Uh, uh, look, man, so I, I've never really hated a release of Posties. He makes pop music that doesn't really do anything for me a lot of times, but I can listen to it well enough. Uh, this album is no different. It's fine. It's got good production. It's got Posty doing his like melodic singing as opposed to his earlier work, but it's it's really indicative of a problem in modern pop music. Who the fuck needs 17 Post Malone tracks on an album like this? If this was say se- seven you know, like 17 minutes and 13 tracks or 13 tracks and 17 minutes, it would be mu- much it would be much less of a trudge to get through. Tracks like yeah. Sign Me Up and Something Real are my favorite on this album. He gets mm-hmm. into his melody and he takes influence from the pop days of yore and the production is not very try hard. Simple guitar loops and synths, man. But tracks like Speedometer and Enough is Enough all kind of like blend together after just like one listen and take away from the experience for me. Look, I get it. Pop stars of today need to make their money and if they get a million streams per song, that's probably a hundred racks or whatever. But the reality is that money is overtaking the art form. I think rock bands know this and while local natives probably doesn't make as much money as Posty does, it still feels like art, whereas this feels like a commercial product. This is average. It's not terrible. I didn't hate it and I could listen to it and it was fine when I was doing something, but nothing stood out to me because I don't think it was meant to. Um, I'm going to give this one a four out of 10 standout is something real. I think I, uh, I did like that song. So I agree and disagree with some of what you said. And I'm, I, I feel like I'm at a similar starting point as you like never really have liked his music 
probably never will. So I'm not necessarily the market for this. And I find most of his music to be fine. Like I can listen to it. It doesn't bug me. But this album was a different in that way. Like I do not like this album at all. I, I have it very low rated. And I I feel like in a weird way, I was kind of hoping for a more classic Post Malone album. <laughs> like, I, I realized that what I did enjoy about his other albums was the the personality and, I guess, the varied production style. He is, I guess, I don't know if part of the marketing for the album is the right phrasing, but part of the lead up to this album is that he plays guitar on all of these songs. And yes, you can tell. <laughs> you can very <laughs> tell with all this primitive pop guitar on it. But as a result, like it doesn't sound like a fun pop album. There's no I Like You with Doja Cat. I'm not saying there has to be a monster hit like that. But there's nothing fun on here, really. Like There's some okay songs, but this sounds like he heard the 1975 and was like... <laughs> yeah i want to do that for my next album and somebody was like yeah you're probably not well suited to do that and he's like oh i can play the guitar and then they just let him do it because these people have fucking yes men around him (laughs) there's dude man there's there's a few brief moments on the album that i didn't hate the i share the same standout as you something real feels like easily the best song parts of texas t were borderline enjoyable but not enough to elevate what is just a boring indie pop rock album. And I don't know, man, I'm going to leave it there. I'm giving this one a two. My standout is something real. All right. Fair. Um, let's move on to utopia by Travis Scott. So one of the most highly anticipated albums of the last few years, um, there's been a lot of weird buildup to this album and I have, been trying to poke you for some early insight into what you were thinking about it and you wouldn't budge so now that the time is here give me your thoughts on utopia all right so from the get-go this was a major marketing stunt with the fucking briefcase handcuffed to someone it was made to be a spectacle and for what it's worth i I really do still visit astro world whenever i'm in the mood for like that vibe and rodeo is undeniably a good trap album I also understand that nobody listens to Travis for the lyrics. Most people who listen to and enjoy Travis Scott's music are about the vibe that he does undeniably create within his music. Whether or not that vibe is for you is a different story. He is pretty good at world building, and he honestly does that okay on this record. But what he doesn't do well is lyrical content, and he struggles to stand out around the features here, which in my opinion, don't even really stand out a whole lot either. Um, This album is ubiquitous. So obviously I I read things before and as I was listening to it and before I had written my review. And so it's obviously drawing comparisons to Kanye and specifically his Yeezus album. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeezus isn't my favorite Kanye project, but it's certainly a great record. What I love about Yeezus is his clear and direct production style and even in the parts where he gets like experimental with it, it still really flows well. And Kanye has, he undeniably has some bars on that, on that record, man. Uh, this album does none of that. The production on Utopia is, I mean, it's good, but the d- distortion used on a, basically every instrument takes away from it. Take Modern Jam, for, exa- for example. Everything from the hi-hats to the vocals to the bass is like being passed through this filter that like sounds like my speakers are crackling. I tried this through my earbuds, through my nice speakers, through my car speakers, and it's the same every time. Tracks like My Eyes make no sense as to why it's even on this album. Just to say he has like 10 racks on his eyes, I really just don't get it, man. It honestly validates the people who listen to Tom McDonald and say that modern rap is just about it's just about how much money they have. In defense of this track, though, that bleed into the trap beat towards the end is done pretty well. Uh, tracks like God's Country have a great place on this album, though. I think the production is great on this song. I think the lyrics aren't as cringy as the other songs, and it just kind of works for the vibe. But what the hell is that hotel room skit at the back end of Sirens? Hotel rooms can be utopia, John. It, it, it It's weird when the lyrical themes of the album don't really connect to one another, yet he tries to make like a half-assed concept work somewhere halfway through the album. It's just It's just really weird, man. And did you know that Drake is teed up, bro? He's teed up. 
Is that a star? Hey, he's, whisper, he's whisper voicing, dude. Don't get him going. Is that a Star Wars TIE Fighter blaster sample in Meltdown? Um, the three beat switches is very try hard to me. All three beats are, are honestly, they're great on this song, but maybe three beats is too many for one track. Can somebody tell me why Playboy Cardi sounds like he's massively constipated on this verse? Is that just what he sounds like? I, I don't listen to Cardi. so They're saying that this me. is his new bronchitis voice. <laughs> okay, that's fucking annoying. Uh, Beyonce does kill her part on Del Resto, though. Um, I know this track is most definitely him just trying a Drake flow randomly in the middle of an album. Uh, it honestly, it, it honestly kind of works for him though. Maybe he should do that more. Uh, Topia Twins is a fun track. The beat is great. Uh, Circus Maximus super underutilizes the weekend, uh, and the and the, it's just Black Skinhead by Kanye. I was. <laughs> it's way too similar to Black Skinhead, man. <laughs> Um, Parasail is fucking weird, man. I like sax, but this is another track I feel is just fucking out of place on this record. Man. It doesn't feel like it belongs. Even if you like consider it an interlude, which I think it is, it doesn't say interlude and it's featuring Young Lean or whatever, but whatever. Mm. The production, mixing, and the beat are all immaculate on Schizo. I'll give him that one. I even yes. like Thugger's verse, if you can believe Thank it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Schizo rule. The lyrics on Lost Forever are a true ferocious and take away from anything redeeming about the track uh mm-hmm. the high-pitched female alvin the chipmunk vocal chopped samples are not good either um i knew that k-pop Garbage. was a weird track as a lead single but holy shit does it seem really odd with the full context of the album mm-hmm. I, I i don't know man i liked maybe maybe four or five of these tracks um now, now that we've gotten the music out of the way, I just wanted to address how incredibly tone deaf this dude is in two parts that I could discern. I only listened to this album maybe three, well, four times. Uh, one is having Dave Chappelle uh, in an interlude saying he forgives himself. And it, it, it's I, I think it's clearly referencing the Astro World thing. And another is on Love, where he says he can hear and see the crowd so well. Dude, the tragedy at Astro World is still pretty recently in the minds of everybody. I just thought those moments were very tone deaf of him and could have been handled better. Out of the 19 tracks, I think I liked four of them. That brings it to a uh, two out of ten. Uh, but uh, I think, and I, actually, I think it's like a two and a half if you do the fraction right. Uh, I do like the production on like a lot of parts though, so I'm gonna bump it up to a three. Uh, my standout is uh, Schizo. I like Schizo. I man, you nailed it. You killed it. Um so Thank yeah, you. man. This songs like My Eyes get on the album, by the way, before I forget, because he just wants to work with Bonnie Vare because he just fucking idolizes and wants to be Kanye West. If there's one thing this album is screaming at you, it is I wanna be Kanye West ten years ago. Travis, I don't think Kanye's gonna kiss you, bro. So Travis did some production and writing on Yeezus and there's going to be a big group of his fans that are going to be like he's not ripping off a sound that he helped create blah 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 I don't really care about any of that man the fact is if I'm thinking about another artist while listening to your album then there's a problem you know straight up In terms of this album itself, though, it's somehow better and worse than I thought it would be. Like, it's been (laughs) such a long gap between albums that I knew there'd be no way he'd come back sounding the exact same. And he definitely did not. There's still a lot of Mike Dean synths, beat switches, too many at times, like you said. There's some ad libs, although I found it's lit to be absent from the album. Once. Um, I heard it once. Is it? I'll have to. I think. I, I don't I think know if I'll go back through, but I'll take your word. You, for you it. don't need to. I did hear it, and I remember being like, "Oh shit, there it is." There it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you said, man, it's a well-produced album. He's able to get any big name feature he wants, but there's also a general broadening of his sound that I'm really torn on. Part of me thinks he's sanding away what interesting corners he had left as an artist. And part of me thinks he's realizing that he doesn't have to do the rage rap thing 24-7. And hopefully he's growing up a little bit. But for an artist who was elevated to the status that he was after he dropped Astral World, the expectation is to push things forward from there. Is that expectation fair? 
I don't know. I don't care. But that's the expectation. And I'm sure that there's some brief examples of that on this album. But there's too many instances, like I said, where I'm just thinking about Yeezus, like Modern Jam, which I think is kind of a rework of an old demo that Daft Punk worked on with Kanye, but somehow has turned into this jam. And Circus Maximus, which we were talking about earlier, which is just Black Skinhead. Or I'm thinking about Frank Ocean influences on tracks like Telekinesis, yep. when I should be thinking about what new things Travis is doing. There's paying homage and there's letting influence get in the way of originality. And I don't I don't go to Travis for much, but I do look to him for something different when I do listen to him. But this album sounds so shockingly normal that it's disappointing. Like, I like less auto-tune. I don't like less experimentation. And 19 fucking songs, man, over an hour and 10 minutes, this thing could have definitely used a trim. But I'll admit, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be based on K-pop. There's a few gems here and there. I love that he let SZA cook for the last few minutes of telekinesis. But overall, man, I'm giving this one a four. My standout is Schizo, which I will admit is a certified banger. Yep. <laughs> that song is easily the only one I will be tempted to come back to. Even telekinesis I won't come back to because I have to sit through like three or four minutes of <laughs> Travis and Future thinking that they're Frank to get to SZA. But... Oh, God, Tra- Future. Uh, yeah, man, I, 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 I can't say I was disappointed because I don't really know what my expectations were, but uh it, it it is what it is man i think you hit the nail on the head and i think my favorite quote from your review is there is paying homage and then there's letting influence take over your originality and i think that that was beautifully said sir well thank you sir um we will leave it there on the travis album for now uh all right let's move on we got a new one from carly ray jepson this is the loveliest time the follow-up to her album last year the loneliest time What'd you think about this one, buddy? This album, like her last, is just a breath of fresh air, John. There is, it is. 13 <laughs> tracks. The album is under 45 minutes. It is pretty. It's fresh. It's well produced. What I love about this record is that there's like this or there's like this organic sound throughout, which is like especially pleasing. Like the bass lines on Kamikaze, like the xylophones and chimes and airplanes, the synth tones and shadow. The strings on weekend love it's all just it it feels organic to me even though i know a lot of it's electronic the vibe that this album curates is so great the track that really gets me through this uh, on this record though is psychedelic switch which does feature a more electronic feel however Mm -hmm. the bass line still feels it gives me this like natural this natural vibe it's fucking incredible the bass is tuned to perfection and it has this kind of like honey dijon kind of house vibe Mm. that just really works for her Mm -hmm. i love a lot about this album there's not much that i dislike to be honest with you i think this is a fantastic follow-up to the loneliest time and uh, there's not much that i dislike about it man uh, I think her voice sounds awesome. I think the instrumentation and the production on this album is fantastic. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, it's somewhere between a seven and an eight for me. Dude, same exact thoughts, man. I am impressed by this album and I'm impressed by her as an artist. I've right. always considered her to be good at a few things in the pop world, but this album is her doing bedroom pop, electro pop, bubblegum, dance pop, 80s revivalism. Like, she does them all successfully, too. You can hear the influence of artists like Ellie Goulding and Little Boots and her sound on this album, but she's developed a signature sound that's somehow both generic and unique at the same time. Like, when you're listening to her, it could be anybody, but you know it's her. But you don't know why you know it's her. (laughs) I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's the only way I can convey, like, how I hear her music. Um, Anyways, man, yes. I, I like this album. It's not an album of the year contender necessarily, but it is really well done. I also have it at like a 7.5. My standout is Kamikaze. That's a bop. It's a great song. Great song. Moving on, we have the debut full length album from Chica. It's called Samson. And you know, I've been waiting years for this. So I'm a you little have. bit biased, but I, I really enjoyed the album. Big surprise. It's, <laughs> it's not perfect. No album is, but 
She was able to expand on everything I loved about her EPs and even explore some new territory on tracks like Prodigy, but the best moments on the album are spent listening to her do what she does best, and that is wrap her ass off over some surprisingly creative instrumentals. She's able to go from on top of the world to her most vulnerable with the same ease she's able to go from rapping to singing, which is very easy. There's a few things she could have cleaned up when it comes to the sequencing on the album and the track selection, but all that shit's minor, man. For a debut album that was years in the making with some hurdles along the way, I think she delivered. I have it at an eight. My standout is Truth or Dare because Chica and Freddie Gibbs on the same track is just (laughs) everything I could ask for. What did you think of this one? I'm going to be real. I thought that was going to be my standout, but it's not uh chica snapped bro this whole album is just her straight up killing it um yep. i think it could be trimmed quite a bit though at 19 tracks and almost an hour long and like you said sequencing is is definitely something that could have been worked on but you know we the outro is the fourth song <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh look man we talked about truth or dare uh with freddie when it dropped still hits just as hard awards is fucking great prodigy is just insane though man uh chica is <laughs> so good chica even has a production credit on it which i love for her um she shows she shows off her singing voice a number of times but on her it's just so beautiful man um other than its length and some of the filler tracks you know kind of taken away from it a bit i did highly enjoy this record e- even like even though some of these tracks are very clearly filler I liked those more than I usually do on albums that are 19 songs long. She even Same. got Stevie motherfucking wonder on one of the tracks, man. I don't think Harmonica he does. Monica does yeah. ass Oh off, yeah, dude. man. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I, I gave this one a seven. My standout is prodigy. Although, uh, although truth or dare is a very close runner up to that one. I just kept Prodigy's coming back a, to prodigy. Prodigy is the album cut standout for sure. Dude, for that sure. song's a banger. Um, good on Chica, man. Love it. Lived yeah, up to buy. Hell yeah. Uh, right. Talk to me about this new album from Arch Echo <laughs> called Final Pitch. Oh, man. I wanted to throw a curveball at you this week, man. I saw this release. And you did. <laughs> I heard one track and I fucking lost it, bro. This is like if Sun Gazer and Polyphia had a love child with Periphery. Um, I would have loved it if there were more vocal contributions to this, but the musicality of it is all something very spectacular, in my opinion. The melodies, the polyrhythms, the the double bass grooves, the bass lines, the breakdowns, it all just comes together so well on this record. It's beautiful, it's heavy, it's light, it's poppy, it's even a little jazzy. It's everything all at once. I don't even know how to grade this one, to be completely honest with you. It's kind of like its own thing. <laughs> it's somewhere between a six and a seven for me. My standouts yeah. are uh, Battlestar Nostalgica or Super Sudden Death. <laughs> Both great standouts, man. Yeah, dude, this album is pretty sick. It's it's instrumental prog metal done right. It's epic. It's creative. It's almost psychedelic in its execution from like the soaring guitar riffs to the effortless sweeps. They definitely show how talented they are immediately and do not really let up for the rest of the album. It's a very specific sound, though, and I don't know if I'm always in the mood for it, but when I am, oh, this, that's this did the trick, man. Uh, I enjoyed this one from a technical and from a personal preference perspective. The only track on it I didn't really like that much was the one with vocals. Um, yeah. I I kept coming back to the instrumental ones over and over. I'm going to give it a 6.5 as well. My standout is the intro track, Angry Sprinkles. Perfect. I like that one. It's a really good one. It's a good one. Uh, it's, I, I'm not sure if you, if you knew what you were getting yourself into, but when you click on that track, you immediately know what the rest of the album's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> because that's yep. the first song I heard on this record, and I was like, oh, yeah, we're talking about this one. Yep. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Loved it, man. Good stuff. Uh, good. Uh, all right, man. Probably the most intense title for an album we've had in a while. This is Forged in Chaotic Spew by Thra. What did you think of it? This is some Arizona sludge death doom metal, man. It's kind of wild how large of a spectrum metal as a genre has gotten over the last couple of decades, man. This is bo- both both albums, the, the Arch Echo one and this one, are arguably both metal. Um, but <laughs> this one's a lot different. Um <laughs> 
Nonetheless, Watch. though, this is right up my alley. <laughs> uh, this is released on tra- uh, translation, translation Lost Records. This is the first full length from them after a couple of EPs. Uh, they recently toured with the UK doom metal band Conan. Uh, and I heard a few people who were massively impressed with their live sound. Uh, they really do blend the genres pretty well here, man. You can hear the death. You can hear the you, you can dread the doom. You can absolutely feel the sludge. There's not much more to say about it other than other than the fact that I'm a fan of how well they tow all of the genre lines for such a young band. I am super excited to hear more from them, but I will be bumping this along with the Acacia Strain from earlier this year when I'm in the mood for doomy stuff for the rest of the year. Um, yep. It's somewhere around a six, maybe a seven for me. I, I don't really have a standout. I think it's its own thing. But if I had to choose, it would probably be Fracture. You didn't say which Acacia Strain album you would be playing it with. I, you're Doom talking about one. the three song Doom yes, album. The, the, I yes, I forget what <laughs> it's called, but we you knew. Yeah, I did know. I just wanted to be a <laughs> dick. Um, yeah, man, you, you really said it all. Like, everybody listened to Brandon's review in terms of this one. Yeah, like, <laughs> Death Sludge is definitely not a genre I am overly familiar with. I don't personally love it, but I enjoyed my experience with this album more than I thought I would for the style of music that it is. Don't know if I'll ever return to it, but the album is really well put together. It sounds good, like it's mixed well, played well, and Primordial Engorgement is a fucking scorcher of a track. For sure. Uh, Yeah, that was the one I came back to the most. I'm going to give this one a 6.5. My standout is the aforementioned Primordial Engorgement. This was a fun one, though. There we go. Glad you liked it, man. Let's cap this week's albums off with a new one from City Windows called Velvet Divorce. Talk to me about this one. Here's some San Diego punk rock for you. Uh, Melody in punk rock has historically been a pretty divisive topic. At least it was in the late 80s and early 90s. Green Day famously was 86 from their club in the Bay, and that's where their song 86 comes from. And some people still don't think that Bad Religion is a punk band. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous, but here we are in 2023 and there are still bands like City Windows who are able to add melody while still staying very solidly in punk rock. Uh, this album is tight as hell. Uh, and like I said earlier, when we talked about that two Canis track, it's the adjacent stuff that's kind of piquing my interest lately. I could hear these guys opening for a mm-hmm. hardcore punk band. I could hear them opening for a pop punk band. It's that kind of versatility that's really scratching an itch that, I, again, I didn't really know that I had. Uh, City Windows vocalist is really unique, man. It struck me on my first listen to them. Kind of guttural, kind of screamy, kind of not either of those things when the moment is right. Songs of rebellion fill this record, but it's coupled with this kind of existentialism that adds a layer of atmosphere to their music, man. Going from The Price to Pay to the title track Velvet Divorce is a great example of this. There isn't a song on this album that I dislike. I do wish the bass was mixed a little bit more up front, uh, but tracks like Old Storms of Hawthorne kind of scratch that punk rock bass itch that I get when I listen to punk. Um, yeah. Self-released, only 21 minutes, and my only real complaint is that I have to keep restarting it when it ends. Uh, <laughs> somewhere between a 7 and an 8 for me. I really liked it. Uh, Velvet Divorce was my standout. Yeah, man, I really enjoyed this one as well. I really liked the back and forth between the two vocalists. I thought their vocal styles meshed well together. They're very high energy without being over the top. They're nostalgic without being cheesy or derivative. And it's a well-paced and sequenced album, man. There's really not a lot more to say about it than that. I have it at a seven. My standout is another year. Really enjoyed this one. I also hit that follow button. There it is. Yeah, I actually bought the vinyl. Everybody go to their band campaign and, and, and buy that. Yes, we should throw the link to that in the show notes. I will do so. All right, that does it for us this week. Join us next week when we'll be breaking down new releases from Quavo, The Front Bottoms, Feed Me, and much, much more. If you liked the show, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. You can find us on Instagram and Reddit. Just search Brandon's Face Pod. Make sure you follow the playlist that this podcast is based on. You can find the link to that in the show notes. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.